In the orthopedic center, we see a lot of children, both from infancy on through their childhood, who have congenital differences of the hand. Children who are born with congenital differences of their hands simply are kids who either have smaller or too few or too many digits. The most common congenital differences are syndactyly, which means the fingers are joined together, or polydactyly, meaning that there are extra digits. Our hand is really quite remarkable. The arm and hand start at this little uh, bud of tissue that grows from the shoulder out. And that happens very early in pregnancy, about day 28. And then it finishes by about day 56. And in the end of that finishing touch, so to speak, that growth is our true hand. And it starts out as a pad, all connected. And then there's a biologic process that separates it. And then the separation leads to normal growth of each digit, including the thumb. If for some reason that process stops short, then you have the situations where fingers don't separate. So the most common is in the middle of the hand, these two don't separate. Or you may get that this separation goes one step too far. And suddenly it divides and you have two thumbs. Or you have two small fingers. When the kids have those differences, then our goal is to try and make those differences as small as possible in terms of how it looks and how it works and in a sense how they and their family feel about it. The diagnosis of a congenital difference is oftentimes now made while mom is pregnant, early in the pregnancy, and many of our referrals and consultations now come literally before the child is born. That is drastically different than in times before where there would be this almost shocking news that the baby has some differences in the delivery room or in the nursery that were unexpected. We're able to answer their questions, provide them with information, in a sense project reasonably what the future will be so that at the time of birth it once again becomes a celebration, it becomes a joyful event, uh, which is a major difference than finding out literally in the delivery room or in the nursery. A concern of parents, especially of mothers, is if they did something wrong. It turns out that to the best of our knowledge, the answer to that is very emphatically no. So there are some conditions that we know are genetic and they run in families. And, and in a sense, those moms, those parents already know that that's part of their family. But most of the time, it's actually, it just in a sense happens. So we spend a fair bit of time trying to work through that with the geneticists and, and be certain that we can answer those questions honestly and fairly, but in the end it turns out it's not anybody's fault. The uniqueness of the problems and the challenges that come with these congenital differences requires a high level of skill and expertise. We've now grown to be 24 pediatric orthopedic surgeons, which is the largest in the country in the world. There's a certain sense of mission and purpose as well as a high level of performance that's expected. Our goal for any of these kids who have congenital differences is to really have healthy, normal lives. And then our other goal is really to support them as individuals, for them to be comfortable with themselves, uh, to be confident, and to do well. Many of these children with congenital differences actually are more self-confident and happier than their peers who have 10 digits. Our parents are incredible in terms of their support of their kids and, and what they uh, enable them to do and how they help them. And, and even in the most severe cases, they uh, design special baseball gloves and they come up with special adaptations for their bicycles. And, and these are just kind of happy, joyful kids.